Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So uh, today's video is going to be mildly epic. We are going to be taking a look at my entire skincare collection. Now I've mentioned this before here on my channel more than one time. I am a total nerd for skincare. I love skincare. It's one of my favorite things in the entire world of beauty because as much as I love makeup and playing with different colors and textures and creating really beautiful looks, I feel like it is so important to take care of the canvas that you're working on first and foremost. So uh, I have amassed a mildly embarrassing collection of skincare. I've got a lot of stuff and uh, I did recently declutter it. Like I tried to declutter my skincare more than anything else. I'm a very frequent basis because skincare products just don't last as long as makeup they don't stay as potent so if I try something out and even if I like it but I'm not like in love with it or I know I want to try something else and I'm not gonna get back to it for a while I give it away to a friend or family member that will actually be able to use it so we're not gonna be doing any decluttering today we're just gonna be talking through my products category by category I'll be showing you exactly how many of each I have Please don't judge me too hard. And yeah, I just thought it might be helpful to point out some highlights of some of my favorite products. I uh, won't be talking about everything. I tried that yesterday. I've already filmed this video once and then decided I needed to refilm it because I had over an hour of footage once I like roughly cut everything down and it was just like, it was too much. So I'm just gonna be talking about a few products in each category, but if you see something and I don't talk about it and you wanna know if it's good or what my experience with it has been, leave a comment and I will definitely do my best to get back to you and let you know what I think of it. So uh, with all that being said, we've got a lot, a lot of skincare to take a look at, so. Let's get into it. All right, so let's start out with cleansers since that's, you know, pretty much the first step in my skincare routine. I have a uh, 13 cleansers, which is a lot. I mean, fortunately, I do go through cleanser faster than anything else. I wash my face twice a day, once in the morning, just to kind of remove any residual oil and skincare from the night before. And then at nighttime, especially if I'm like wearing makeup, I gotta take that stuff off. So I have a bunch of different kinds of cleansers for those different purposes, but it obviously still is a lot. The one I'm probably closest to finishing up at this point is the Pixi Rose Cream Cleanser. As you can see, I've made a pretty good dent in this guy. I've been using this as a morning cleanse and I absolutely love it. It's so gentle, it smells really refreshing, and it's just the perfect thing to kind of get my skin prepped for my morning skincare without leaving my face feeling tight or dry. And then this guy is probably what I've been using most often for removing my makeup at bedtime. This is the Mamand Petal Spa Oil to Foam Cleanser. I just picked this up last month, so I've been testing it out and I've been really enjoying it. I feel like it does a great job of breaking down makeup, very similar to an oil-based cleanser, but it doesn't leave any greasy residue behind. It kind of washes more like a traditional cleanser, but with a little bit of extra makeup removing power. So if you don't like something like this guy here, I love the Leaders What Happened Last Night Cleansing Oil. This is a great job of breaking down makeup, but I have to double cleanse with it because it leaves like a greasy film behind on my skin. So if you don't like that and you don't want to double cleanse, this is a great alternative. And if I need to do some like serious makeup removal, let's say I'm wearing winged liner, lashes, the whole nine yards, I really love a good cleansing balm. Now this Physicians Formula One, the Perfect Matcha Cleansing Balm, is a nice alternative to the green clean from pharmacy if you don't want to spend the money on this guy they remove makeup fairly similarly I really love the way this guy smells it's like a lime popsicle and I find it's very effective without again leaving too much of a greasy film behind this guy I feel like is just slightly more greasy and maybe just slightly less effective but it is it definitely still works and it's a lot less expensive than this guy so been enjoying having both of these and this is a great drugstore cleansing balm if you're looking for one. And then the newest cleansers to my collection are these two guys here. I have not tried either of these out yet. I just got sent the Pixi Glow Tonic Cleansing Gel in PR and I love the original Glow Tonic so I'm really excited to give this guy a try. And then the Glam Glow Gentle Bubble Cleanser I just got in my May BoxyCharm box. So 
very much looking forward to giving these guys a go. Then I have my makeup removers, micellar waters, makeup wipes. So I've currently got two packages of makeup wipes on hand, three makeup removers, and two bottles of micellar water. Honestly, I won't need to buy any more of these for quite a while, but I do use this stuff very regularly, so I feel like this is not super ridiculous as far as the amount I have on hand. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos, you'll know I got the makeup eraser a couple months back and I've really been enjoying using it. It's a lot less wasteful than makeup remover wipes are, so I've been trying to get away from using these guys. Uh, these I just received in PR from Derma E. They're their vitamin C brightening micellar wipes and I do love the um, vitamin C micellar water from Derma E, so I know these are gonna be great but uh, if I hadn't been sent them, I probably wouldn't have picked them up just because, again, I am trying to get away from makeup remover wipes. These guys I got for dirt cheap in an Ulta order, and I picked them up pretty much exclusively for removing swatches from my arm when I'm filming or when I'm photographing blog posts and things like that because the makeup eraser sometimes, you know, I want to save it from using on my face at nighttime, and swatches can get a little bit crazy, so I do like to have one you know, thing of makeup wipes on hand for that purpose. And uh, these are actually really nice. They're very gentle. They don't seem um, like irritating at all. And they do a really good job of removing makeup. So if you do like makeup wipes, I would actually recommend checking these out. Now, as far as micellar water goes, honestly, nothing beats Bioderma in my eyes. I've tried a lot of micellar waters now, and a lot of them out there are decent. Like they do a good job of breaking down your makeup, but the OG Bioderma is the most gentle and the most effective in my opinion, especially this guy with the original pink cap. You could legit like get this stuff in your eyeball and it wouldn't sting. It's so gentle, but it does such a good job of removing makeup. If you're wearing something that's super waterproof, you may need like an oily based makeup remover or something like this that's specifically designed for removing eye makeup. But just for like your normal day to day, um, everyday makeup, regular mascara and whatnot, I mean, this will get it all off. And then as far as an extra heavy duty eye makeup remover, I'm almost uh, done with this Mary Kay oil-free eye makeup remover and then I have a backup on hand. This is the one Mary Kay product that I still love. I used to sell Mary Kay many, many, many years ago, like a decade ago at this point in time. Uh, and I honestly, I don't know, I don't love their products. I think, you know, they're not just my speed, I suppose, but this stuff, it really is amazing. It does a great job of taking your makeup off. It's one of those bi-phase makeup removers you gotta shake up so it looks kind of milky like this once you do so, and uh, yeah. I really enjoy it, so I do like having it on hand. And then finally, this guy here, the H2O Plus Beauty Elements Shaken Not Stirred Makeup Remover is actually brand new. I haven't tried this yet. I've been trying to get through that Mary Kay makeup remover before I crack into this guy, but I'm really curious to see how well it uh, removes my eye makeup. So after I cleanse, I do like to tone my skin, and uh, these are the toners I have on hand, as well as a couple of my essences, because I didn't have a lot of them. I figured they kind of fit into the same step in my skincare routine, so I thought I would include them here. So uh, as you can see, I am stocked up on Pixi Glow Tonic for uh, basically the entire rest of my life. I have two 500 ml bottles here that I was sent in PR. Pixi sends out these personalized glow tonics as a Christmas gift, so this one I got uh, December 2017, this one I just got last year, and honestly, I still have so much left in this one because I didn't crack into it until I would say, I don't know, three, four months ago because I already had a glow tonic on hand that I was trying to finish up. So I, I have more glow tonic now than I'll ever know what to do with, but I do really like this toner. Uh, I like to use it at bedtime only because I find if I use it twice a day, my skin gets a little overly sensitized. It does have glycolic acid in it. And since I exfoliate pretty regularly and use some other exfoliating products, I don't like to go too overboard on my skin. So it's taking me even longer to go through it because of that. And actually for daytime, I've been preferring using the Rose Tonic from Pixi because this one is much more gentle, balancing. It's a little more hydrating for the skin. So usually use this in the mornings to prep my skin before moisturizer. And then something new and interesting I've been testing out is this guy. This is the Vitabrid C12 Facial Boosting Water. So this describes itself as a toner, but I feel like it's really more of an essence, especially the way you apply it. It's recommended that you splash it into the palms of your hands and then press it into the skin, and that's kind of how 
I've always seen essences traditionally applied. So this guy is formulated with peptides and hyaluronic acid to really help to balance the skin, plump it up, keep moisture in the skin. Uh, and I do find it to be a really nice lightweight product. Now this was specially formulated to use with this guy, which is a really interesting product. This is a brightening powder. It's highly concentrated vitamin C and it also has what else in here? Alatonin, which is supposed to be like a really strong skincare ingredient. And it also has 25% zinc oxide to help like protect your skin from the sun. So basically you activate this powder by mixing it with a little bit of this toning water in your hand before you apply it to your face. And I thought that was really cool because it keeps the vitamin C super potent and fresh. Vitamin C is something that can kind of break down really quickly. So I thought that was a neat delivery method. I have noticed when I've used these two um, together, my skin has been A, a lot less oily and B, a lot smoother. Like I've had a lot less texture. So that's really cool and interesting. I'm definitely gonna keep trying them out. The only downside, this is hella expensive. This little tube here is $68, which is kind of hefty price tag, but it's like super, super potent ingredient wise. The uh, toner I think is like 28. So not quite so bad if you just wanted to get this. You could use it all on its own, but the pair together is a little bit pricey, but it definitely seems to be working some magic. Next up, I have my facial mists, of which I have five. I've really been enjoying using these after I tone to kind of just give my skin a little bit of extra moisture to kind of refresh. It feels really nice if you just, you know, got out of a hot shower and you missed yourself down with one of these. It's just very refreshing. And while most of these sprays say on them, you can use them over makeup to kind of refresh throughout the day. I prefer using these particular ones under makeup as part of my skincare routine, just because they're a little bit less about mattifying, more about hydrating. So I do have a lot of other sprays, but they're more makeup setting sprays. These ones I consider more skincare. I think the hidden gem of my entire face mist collection is this guy. This is the Skin Fix Coconut Water Hydrating Mist. So good. The mister on this is so fine. It's honestly beautiful and it smells delicious. It's honestly more of a cucumber scent than it is a coconut scent. It does have cucumber water, coconut, and rose water in the formulation and it's just so lovely. The only bad thing, you can't get this right now because Skin Fix is in the middle of a rebrand. Uh, they are now going to be carried at Sephora and they're repackaging all of their products. So I did read on their Instagram they are planning on bringing this guy back this year. They just haven't finished uh, relaunching it yet. So if you want to get your hands on this, you're going to just have to wait a little bit. And then the next step that I move on to is serum. And I own four currently, uh, but these two here are actually brand new to me. I haven't used them yet. This one I just got in PR from Pixie. It's their Glow Tonic Serum. Really curious to see how this guy works because I do enjoy the Glow Tonic and I think this is just gonna be a little bit more concentrated as far as the exfoliating properties go. And then this I got, I think, from Generation Beauty back in the fall. This is the Innisfree Intensive Hydrating Serum with green tea seed. So I haven't cracked into this guy yet, mostly because I've been trying to work through these two serums, but I'll be curious to give this guy a try in the future. And then uh, these two bad boys are both amazing skincare products, but they are stupidly expensive, which makes me sad because, you know, I'm not someone that likes to spend a ton, ton of money on skincare or beauty. I don't normally treat myself to uber luxury products, but I can't deny these are both so good. The stem cellular one I got in a boxy Lux box, and this is a more like gel-like serum. Uh, it's very lightweight, very refreshing on the skin. I really like this in the warmer weather because it doesn't make me feel greasy at all. This I used a lot. Um, I think maybe I got this in the first boxy Lux box that was back in September, so I used it kind of around there and through most of the fall. Really enjoyed it a lot. And then over the winter, I switched over to this guy, which I got in an Influencer Vox box along with the rest of the Peptide 21 line from Peter Thomas Roth. This wrinkle resist serum is a hundred dollars. 
it makes me want to cry a little bit inside, but it is so good. It's infused with 21 different peptides and also a bunch of other really great skincare ingredients to really uh, like plump the look of skin, minimize um, signs of aging. And uh, now that your girl is in her 30s, I kind of am starting to really appreciate that. So this is a beautiful serum. It leaves your skin looking so glowy. It is a little bit more rich and thick though. So now that it's getting warmer and my skin is going to start to get more greasy, I don't know if I will use this during the day. I might just save it for use at night and then use this guy during the day. But yeah, have definitely noticed good things from my skin when using these. And then we move on to moisturizers, of which I have probably way more than I need, but again, I do use this every single day, twice a day. There are some here that I exclusively use at bedtime because they're a little bit too heavy for me to use during the day, and others that are really nice and lightweight and wear really well under makeup. So as far as my absolute favorites right now, the Wander Beauty Dive-In Moisturizer, I'm like seriously addicted to. This guy is so good really for any time of day but i've been really loving it for wearing under makeup because i feel like it does not make my skin greasy at all it provides a lot of hydration that's really long lasting but it's not greasy so i feel like it helps to keep my skin balanced and control oil throughout the day um, without you know clogging up my pores or disturbing my makeup or anything like that i also really love the pure lease watermelon energizing aqua balm for daytime this smells so good. It smells like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. It's really refreshing and it's got one of those gel cream formulations So it feels almost like water when you're rubbing it into the skin. It's really refreshing very very lightweight So really enjoy this guy especially in the spring and summer and then for bedtime I've been really enjoying the uh, pixie rose ceramide cream This is super nourishing and really luxurious feeling on the skin but it doesn't clog my pores, it doesn't break me out, it's not too heavy for my oily skin, so I really, really like that. And then I've also really been loving both of these guys. Both of these moisturizers are infused with peptides, so they're really great for fighting signs of aging in your skin. The Peptide 21 moisturizer is more lightweight than the Derma E1. This is very rich. I only like to use this at bedtime because it's a little bit too emollient for my skin during the day. But this guy I could use morning and night because while it is pretty creamy, it's not too thick and heavy and I don't find that it makes my skin look greasy. So. Both of these are really good. Obviously, this is significantly less expensive than the Peter Thomas Roth. So if you're interested in trying out skincare with peptides and you don't want to splurge on this guy, I would say check out the Derma E. Now this next category surprised me. I did not realize I had so many oils on hand. I have 11 of them. And now to be fair, some of these I also would use on the body, not necessarily just on the face, but uh, I, I've amassed quite a little collection here. Now, these guys are oils I use as acne spot treatments, and they are honestly game changers. The Body Shop Tea Tree Oil is what I've been using for over a decade now. Uh, this stuff will clear up a pimple in no time, and it does not dry your skin out. It's really amazing. But then I more recently discovered that Derma E has a tea tree and vitamin E oil blend. And this is much more natural. Like this has a lot of filler ingredients. This is legit just tea tree oil and vitamin E and that's it. And you can use this on a bunch of different skin concerns because it's going to help to really um, like heal the skin with that vitamin E. And tea tree is a natural antibacterial um, ingredient. So that's why it's so great uh, to fight against acne. So would definitely highly recommend if you suffer from breakouts to have something like this on hand because it will totally change the game for you. And then I've got like some just pure oils here. I have avocado and grapeseed oil. These are really great for cutting like my essential oils if I want to, I don't know, get myself a massage or uh, sometimes like I'll use essential oils for migraine and things like that. So I like to cut them with a little bit of another oil, so that's what these are great to have on hand for. Also, grapeseed oil in general is great for oily skin, even just to use as a moisturizer on the face because it doesn't clog your pores and it's really lightweight. All these cocoa oils from Organic to Green are also awesome, but I don't like to use them as facial moisturizers because I find coconut oil is a little bit too heavy for my skin. 
These I use for a number of different things. I'll use them for removing eye makeup. I use them to remove like really stubborn swatches from my arms. Like if I'm swatching liquid lipsticks or things like that, I'll just put some of this oil on a paper towel and all the lipstick will come right off. But you could also use this to like moisturize the ends of your hair. You could use it on your cuticles. Like you could use this stuff pretty much anywhere. It's nice because unlike just straight up coconut oil, it's a liquid, it's not a solid. So it's very, very convenient. And then I have a few other nice Nice little facial oils. This Radiant Glow one from Derma E is really lightweight and lovely. Really enjoy the rose oil blend from Pixie Beauty. And then this guy I haven't even tried yet. This is the Dermalogica Phyto Replenish Oil. I've heard that this is supposed to be really, really good for your skin, but I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. So if you guys like this, you use it, let me know what you think of it. Now I decided to kind of pull these guys out and talk about them separately because all four of these products are specifically overnight skin treatments. So I have four of them. The Derma E Overnight Peel. This is a very gentle alpha hydroxy acid type product. So if you're new to AHAs and you want to experiment with chemical exfoliation, this is not overly strong, burny, anything like that. It's very, very gentle, but it will make your skin kind of more smooth and glowy. I also have the Elemis Peptide 4 Night Recovery Cream Oil. I really don't know what to think about this. I have a feeling that because Elemis products are so heavily scented and fragranced, they might be causing my skin some irritation. I feel like I've noticed after I've used this, my skin gets a little bit more textured. I don't know. I haven't used it enough to say for sure, but I'm a little dubious about this guy. Then this is actually almost empty. This is the uh, Pixie Overnight Glow Serum. This is a more concentrated um, chemical exfoliant that you use at bedtime. It is a little bit burny, but not bad. Uh, but I do notice it definitely helps to make my skin look a little bit smoother and brighter. So I do enjoy it. And then this guy I'm also trying to pan. I'm almost done with it. It's the Dr. Brandt Hydrobiotic Recovery Sleeping Mask. This is a really nice uh, product you can use in lieu of a moisturizer at bedtime. Uh, and it's very, very nourishing for the skin. It also has probiotics in it to kind of help to rebalance um, and promote the growth of good bacteria on your skin. So I, I find it to work pretty well. Uh, it doesn't clog pores, doesn't cause me any irritation. And I think it does really help my skin to stay clear. So like this guy a lot. And then I've got some eye treatment products. I will say I probably neglect my eyes more than anything else when it comes to my skincare and it's something I'd like to get better about. I have uh, no shortage of eye masks. I have a ton of these Wander Beauty baggage claim ones. These are really luxe and nice. They definitely make your eyes feel refreshed. They help to reduce puffiness. They're really pretty also. I just feel like I never use these and I should. I keep I feel like saving them for special occasions but there honestly aren't that many special occasions in my life so I should just try to get through some of these. And then I have even more of those eye patches in this little tub here from Pixie Beauty. These are the detoxify depuffing eye patches. These are really nice and also very refreshing. And I actually think I prefer them in this kind of jar format. You get 30 pairs in here. It's just a little less packaging waste than all of these little foil packets, although it is perhaps a little less travel friendly. Then I have one singular eye cream, perhaps the most reasonable thing of my entire skincare collection. Honestly though, I think the reason is that I just never have been a big eye cream person. I've never been able to really fall in love with one. So if you guys can make some recommendations if your favorite eye creams leave a comment and let me know this one is fine I feel like it's pretty lightweight it's not very um, heavy but I don't really know how different it is from just like a regular old moisturizer so I use it maybe not as consistently as I should but I'm not like obsessed with it and then I have a fresh new tube of the uh, Grande Cosmetics Grande Lash Lash Enhancing Serum I have used this in the past and I really did enjoy it I felt like it made a difference in my lashes it did irritate my eyes a little bit so I was a little freaked out about using it and that's why I stopped but I'm kind of curious to try it again. So I'm thinking about uh, doing like a before and after type blog post or something with this guy because it is a fresh brand new tube. So if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing, let me know. And then the last, I would say like daily skincare product that I use is sunscreen. I try to apply sunscreen 
Every day is the last step of my skincare routine. I have four different ones on hand right now. The newest is this Ren Clean Screen. You guys saw me uh, pick this up and use it on camera in my Sephora uh, VIB sale haul that I just did. But yeah, all of these are mineral sunscreens. I only use mineral sunscreen on my face because I've noticed over the years that chemical sunscreens cause my skin a lot of irritation. I get a lot of tiny little bumps, breakouts, whatnot, so I just learned to completely avoid it. I I can use chemical sunscreen on my body and it's been fine, but for my face and neck, I go mineral 100%. So this Ren sunscreen is cool because it's got a lot of natural ingredients and it doesn't have any silicone. It's a totally zinc based sunscreen and this one goes on, it's white and blends in clear to your skin. So this is just a plain old regular sunscreen you can use every day with or without makeup when you're going to the beach, whatever. But these three are more um, almost like a makeup primer. These are tinted sunscreens. They all do have kind of a silicone base. They're very pore filling. The tint is very subtle, so it's not like it provides coverage. It just kind of evens out your skin a little bit and kind of blurs the look of pores a little bit. But these are all really nice to wear under makeup or all on their own for just like a really light makeup kind of day. The Coats and the Kula, these two are both unscented, but the Bare Republic one does have kind of like a vanilla coconut scent to it. It's nice, but if you don't like fragrance, I would stick to one of these guys. And yeah, I think honestly, all four of these sunscreens are good. I kind of just rotate through them based on how I'm feeling for the day. As a heads up, Bear Republic is actually owned by Kula. So uh, this is kind of like the drugstore version of the Kula sunscreen. So if you cannot afford to shell out the money for this guy, but you've been wanting to try it, I would check Bear Republic out. And then I've got my like weekly treatment type products. So my physical exfoliants, my chemical exfoliant and mask type products that I like to alternate through, use maybe two to three times a week, depending on what it is. So I have eight physical exfoliants. No, I'm not bad at counting. I count these guys as one product because it is a pair you're meant to use together. And this little uh, dream team here may actually be my favorite physical exfoliant that I own. This stuff is like magic, but it is so stupid expensive, it, it pains me. It's $100 for this set. Uh, but the Erno Laszlo White Marble Dual Phase Vitamin C Peel will make your skin baby soft. It's so good. You first go in with this like balm that smells kind of like oranges and it's interesting because unlike other physical exfoliants, this is super, super rich. It's like a thick balm with lots of scrubby bits in it. So it really protects and nourishes the skin while you're scrubbing. Then you go in with a couple drops of this peel that kind of helps to activate the first step, I guess. I don't know. It works some interesting little magic. You rub it onto your face for a couple of minutes, you rinse it off, and your skin feels so smooth and not stripped. It's kind of amazing. So yeah, I really love this, but I am trying to finish it up because this is getting old and uh, I'm sad because I don't know if I want to repurchase. I obviously have a lot of other physical exfoliants that I don't need to, but I, I do really, really enjoy it. I also think both of these products are really cool because they are powders that you activate with water. These are great for more gentle exfoliation because they're not quite as scrubby as you know something that's got like microdermabrasion crystals in it. The Daily Microfoliant is maybe a little bit more gentle than the H2O Plus Beauty one, but I, I think they're fairly similar. So yeah, these are the kinds of things I might use in the morning if I feel like my skin's looking a little dull, a little textured, needs a little extra pick me up. Sometimes I'll use this in lieu of a regular cleanser because I'm not, you know, needing to remove any makeup or anything like that. Then I've got my masks and peels. These are my pampering products, the kinds of things I like to use on the weekends if I want to just give myself a little at-home facial. I've got uh, 11 different products here, which uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I definitely have a hard time going through these because you only use them once a week or so, and I obviously try to rotate through as much of this collection as possible, but I do like having different options on hand depending on what my skin needs week to week. So like this guy here is amazing if my pores are looking super clogged and congested because it will suck everything out of them. This is a really detoxing charcoal clay mask. 
Uh, it is a little bit drying, but it works wonders. If you've got oily, congested skin, would highly recommend. And then these guys I've been super impressed with. I think this might be the least expensive product in the Peptide 21 line. I don't remember, but man, I think this honestly might be the most effective. I notice a significant difference on the days where I use this versus when I don't. So these are amino acid exfoliating peel pads, uh, and they have a 20% exfoliating exfoliating complex in them. So this is basically a super strong chemical exfoliant in kind of one of those old school like pads you might remember from like being a teenager, but you know, way more fancy. So what you do is you essentially wipe one of the pads all over your face and neck. You let it sit for about three minutes and then you actually rinse off the product because you wouldn't want to leave it on your skin. It would exfoliate too much uh, and it does tingle quite a bit but I don't find that it's uncomfortable and burning and man once you rinse it off your skin is so glowy like plumped and glowy it's kind of amazing honestly just talking about it now is making me be like I need to go use one of these today I haven't used it in a little while and I don't know what's wrong with me because when I was originally first testing out this line I was using these like every week and I noticed a big difference in my skin and uh, then we have sheet masks now uh, I just counted these and I have 41 of them which is uh, it's a lot of sheet masks I only use a sheet mask about once a week, so I'm realizing it would take me almost a year to go through all of these. And I do get more in subscription boxes every once in a while, or occasionally in PR, so that's why I have quite the collection of them. I do really enjoy sheet masking. It's a great follow-up, especially to a uh, like detoxing clay mask or something that might be a little bit more drying or harsh on the skin. These are really great to soothe, to calm, to moisturize, nourish the skin, and they just feel really nice. They're very pampering. So I am realizing now I uh, probably should uh, like sheet mask today because I have a lot of these. They don't last forever. The shelf life is usually only around a year or two, depending on the brand. But yeah, as you can see, I, I do enjoy them. They're a lot of fun, and I have a whole mess of different brands on hand. And then finally, I thought I would give you guys a quick peek at my skincare minis. I'm in the middle of doing a mini product project pan right now. I will uh, throw that video for you guys up in the cards if you want to check it out. But I recently realized that I've amassed quite a few of these little mini skincare products. You know, this is the kind of stuff you get as point perks or little bonus promo add-ons when you place orders from Sephora or Ulta. Sometimes things come in subscription boxes. So I've got a lot of little skincare here. And while I don't want to use necessarily all of these up because I like to have minis on hand for traveling, I feel like there is a lot here that I've been neglecting. Some of it's getting a little bit old and I know I've mostly been favoring my full size skincare over trying some of these products. So I decided it was probably smart to attempt to make my way through some of them. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you uh, enjoyed nerding out about skincare with me. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your support so much. And as I mentioned before, if you have questions about any of the products I talked about or even any of the ones that I didn't that you may have seen uh, that I just showed you, leave a comment. I will try to give you as much feedback on these products as I can. And if you have any requests for any follow-up videos to this one, be they skincare related or something completely different, let me know that too. I love hearing from you guys and I really want to make videos you like watching so let me know what your requests are and on that note I'm gonna let you guys go but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday and I will see you in my next video bye